Did you know that Virginia, often overlooked, was actually a pivotal battlefield during the Civil War? Yes, that's right, the Old Dominion, known for its picturesque landscapes and historical landmarks, holds a significant yet often unseen role in the pages of American history. Virginia, during the Civil War, was the site of more battles than any other state. This was not just due to geographical coincidence, but rather, it was a testament to its strategic importance. The state's proximity to the seat of the Confederacy in Richmond and the Union capital in Washington, D.C., coupled with its complex network of rivers and railroads, made it a critical location in the war's progression. But Virginia was not merely a passive landscape upon which the war unfolded. It was here that many of the war's most significant events took place, shaping the course of American history in ways that still reverberate today. Virginia was the stage for the first major battle of the Civil War at Bull Run, and the site of the war's longest siege in Petersburg. It was within its borders that the bloodiest single day of the war occurred at Antietam. And of course, who could forget the pivotal moment when Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Union General Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse. This event, marking the end of the Civil War, was a turning point not just for Virginia, but for the entire nation. Yet, the Civil War was more than just a collection of battles and military maneuvers. It was a defining period that tested the resilience of the American spirit, and the ideals upon which the nation was founded. The events that unfolded in Virginia during this time were not just significant in terms of military strategy, but also in their impact on the social and political fabric of the country. So, let's delve deeper, to uncover the hidden stories of Virginia's role in the Civil War. Let's embark on a journey, that will take us back to a time of upheaval and transformation, and explore the unseen significance of Virginia in this pivotal chapter of American history. The Civil War was not just a battle of states, it was a clash of titans, the commanding officers. In Virginia, the battleground was marked by the footprints of several such titans. Notably, on the Confederate side, we had the iconic General Robert E. Lee. A man of impeccable military pedigree, Lee's leadership was marked by strategic acumen, and an unyielding resolve. His aggressive tactics, such as those seen in the Battle of Chancellorsville, often confounded Union forces, turning the tide of battles in favor of the Confederacy. On the Union side there were equally formidable figures, such as Lt. Gen. Ulysses S. Grant. Known for his tenacity and refusal to accept anything short of total victory, Grant's approach was a stark contrast to Lee's. Grant's strategy, often labeled as attritional warfare, aimed to exhaust the Confederacy's resources, slowly but surely. His siege of Petersburg, a grueling nine-month affair, is a testament to his relentless pursuit of victory. Then we had the audacious General Thomas Stonewall Jackson, a Confederate commander, whose reputation for bold and swift attacks earned him his nickname. His performance in the First Battle of Bull Run, where his brigade resisted the Union's advances, cemented his place in the annals of military history. On the other hand, Major General George B. McClellan for the Union was known for his meticulous planning and caution in execution. Though often criticized for his reluctance to engage in battle, his Peninsula Campaign was a calculated attempt to capture the Confederate capital of Richmond. These commanding officers, each with their distinctive leadership styles and strategies, played a pivotal role in the course of the Civil War. Their decisions, their victories and defeats were not just isolated incidents. They were the threads that wove together the fabric of this great historical tapestry. These leaders, their decisions and their actions would shape the course of the war in Virginia. Virginia, a silent witness to the blood and valor of the Civil War, bore the brunt of numerous battles. The state's strategic location and importance made it a hotbed of conflict, hosting more than 2,000 engagements of various scales. Let's embark on a chronological journey through some of the key battles that took place in Virginia. Our journey commences in the spring of 1861, at the First Battle of Bull Run, also known as First Manassas. It was the first major land battle of the Civil War, a brutal confrontation that shattered the illusion of a quick and easy war. The Confederates, led by Brigadier General P.G.T. Beauregard, emerged victorious, sending a clear message, the South would not be easily subdued. The following year, in June 1862, the Seven Days Battles unfolded around Richmond. Union General George B. McClellan's Peninsula Campaign was thwarted by the aggressive tactics of Confederate General Robert E. Lee. This series of battles marked Lee's emergence as a formidable military leader and set the tone for the fierce fighting that would characterize the war in Virginia. 
fast forward to December of the same year. The Battle of Fredericksburg was a significant engagement, where Lee's Confederate army dealt a crushing blow to the Union forces under Major General Ambrose Burnside. The Union army's defeat was a poignant reminder of the harsh realities of war and the steep price of victory. The summer of 1863 brought forth the Battle of Chancellorsville, often considered Lee's perfect battle due to his risky but successful division of his army in the face of superior numbers. This victory however came at a high cost, with the death of Lieutenant General Thomas Stonewall Jackson, a key Confederate commander and a significant loss for the South. In 1864 the Overland Campaign, led by Union Lieutenant General Ulysses S. Grant, marked a turning point. Despite heavy losses at the Wilderness, Spotsylvania Courthouse and Cold Harbor, Grant's relentless push towards Richmond signaled a shift in the Union's war strategy. Our journey concludes with the Siege of Petersburg, a grueling nine-month standoff from June 1864 to April 1865. This battle, marked by trench warfare and attritional strategies, eventually led to the fall of Richmond and paved the way for the end of the Civil War. Each battle was a critical juncture, a deciding factor in this war between brothers. The soil of Virginia absorbed the blood of countless soldiers, Union and Confederate alike. The state bore witness to the shifting fortunes of war, the courage of its combatants, and the tragic cost of a nation divided. Among the many battles one event stands out, the surrender of Robert E. Lee to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse. This was not just another military capitulation, it was a moment that encapsulated the spirit of a nation at war with itself a moment that held within it the seeds of a new beginning. Let's wind the clock back to April, 1865. The Confederate Army, led by General Lee, had been cornered in Appomattox, Virginia. The Union forces, under the command of General Grant were closing in. The Confederate resources were dwindling. Their food was scarce, their ammunition was running low, and their morale was on the brink of collapse. General Lee, a man of honor and dignity, recognized the inevitable. He knew that further resistance would only result in unnecessary bloodshed, so he made a decision that would alter the course of history. He sent a letter to General Grant expressing his willingness to surrender. The surrender took place on April 9th in the parlor of Wilmer McLean's house in Appomattox Courthouse. It was a moment filled with tension, but also with a strange sense of relief. The two generals, both distinguished in their own ways, met face to face. The terms of surrender were generous, a testament to Grant's respect for Lee and his desire to begin healing the nation's wounds. Soldiers were allowed to return home with their horses and mules for they would be needed for the spring planting. Officers could keep their sidearms, there would be no prosecutions for treason. Grant even arranged for 25,000 rations to be distributed among the famished Confederate troops. In essence, the surrender was not seen as a humiliation, but as an honorable end to a devastating conflict. The news of the surrender spread like wildfire. It was greeted with jubilation in the North, and with a sense of profound relief in the South. The war was over, the Union had been preserved. And while the road to Reconstruction would be long and fraught with challenges, there was at last a glimmer of hope. But the surrender at Appomattox Courthouse was more than just the end of the Civil War. It was a pivotal moment in the narrative of America. It marked a shift from a collection of states with diverging interests to a more unified nation. It set the stage for the abolition of slavery and the struggle for civil rights. It was a turning point in the truest sense of the term. This single event marked a turning point, not just in the war, but in the history of America. It was a testament to the power of reconciliation, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a nation that, despite its deep divisions and bitter conflicts, was able to find a path towards unity and progress. The surrender at Appomattox Courthouse was not the end, but the beginning of a new chapter for America. In the aftermath of the war, Virginia, the state that had been the stage for the most battles, bore the physical and emotional scars of a nation divided. Towns, farms and families were left in ruins. But from these ashes, the spirit of resilience began to emerge. The end of the Civil War marked the start of Reconstruction, a period of rebuilding and reform. Newly freed slaves in Virginia and throughout the South faced the challenge of building lives as free people. The 13th Amendment abolishing slavery was a monumental step, but the road to true equality was long and fraught. Many former slaves found themselves in a world that was free in name only, as they grappled with restrictive black codes and the rise of the Ku Klux Klan. Yet, there were glimmers of progress. 
In Virginia, schools for African Americans were established and some African Americans even held political office during Reconstruction. The promise of the Reconstruction era was a beacon of hope, despite the many roadblocks faced. Meanwhile, the state of Virginia worked to heal its own wounds. The once bustling economy, heavily reliant on the institution of slavery, had to be reimagined. The rebuilding of infrastructure, devastated by the war, was a Herculean task. The surrender of Robert E. Lee to Ulysses S. Grant at Appomattox Courthouse did not merely signal the end of the Civil War, it heralded a new era, an era of a united America, albeit one with deep-seated issues to address. The war had changed the very fabric of the nation. It had challenged the concept of freedom, equality, and what it meant to be an American. The Civil War, a defining moment in American history, left an indelible mark on Virginia and the nation. This war, born out of division, ultimately led to a more united and progressive America. The lessons learned, the bravery shown, and the sacrifices made in Virginia and across the nation during those turbulent times, continue to shape the America we know today. Virginia's role in the Civil War was not just about battles and commanders, it was about the shaping of a nation. This statement encapsulates the essence of our narrative today. The imprint of the Civil War on Virginia is profound, visible in its landscape, its culture, and its collective memory. Let's take a moment to revisit the pivotal points we've discussed. Virginia was the stage for some of the most significant battles of the Civil War, from the First Battle of Bull Run, where the harsh reality of the conflict first dawned, to the Siege of Petersburg, which marked the beginning of the end for the Confederacy. These fields of conflict have become sacred grounds, whispering tales of valor and sacrifice to those who walk their paths. The commanding officers who led their troops on Virginian soil were not merely military strategists but architects of history. Figures like Robert E. Lee and Ulysses S. Grant shaped the course of the war with their decisions, their victories, and their losses. Their narratives, intertwined with Virginia's story, have become an integral part of the state's legacy. We cannot forget the momentous event at Appomattox Courthouse, where the surrender of Robert E. Lee to Ulysses S. Grant took place. This was not just a military capitulation, but a symbolic moment that marked the beginning of a long and arduous journey towards reunification for a nation torn apart by war. The echoes of this moment still resonate in Virginia, a poignant reminder of the cost of division. Today the legacy of the Civil War in Virginia is multifaceted. It is etched in the historic sites and battlefields that dot its landscape, each a testament to the state's pivotal role in the conflict. It's woven into the fabric of its culture, influencing literature, art, and education. It is a part of the state's identity, a complex tapestry of triumph, tragedy, and transformation. Yet, the Civil War's impact extends beyond the bounds of history. It has shaped Virginia's present and will continue to influence its future. The lessons of unity, resilience, and the human cost of conflict serve as a guiding beacon, illuminating the path ahead. They remind us of the importance of understanding our past, to navigate our present, and shape a better future. Virginia's story is not unique but a part of a larger narrative. Each state has its own tale to tell, its own role in the grand saga of the Civil War. They are pieces of a complex puzzle that, when pieced together, paint a picture of a nation's struggle, perseverance, and evolution. To see what happened in your state during the Civil War, click the playlist that's on your screen, and thanks for watching.